Hey everybody, welcome back. This is episode 24, and we are going to do a little bit more exploring of the abandoned house here, the, or the strange house rather, strange and abandoned, before we head onward. So it looks like most of the doors are still blocked. That sofa is back. Oh, and we have a wild Pokemon. It is a Raticate. Okay, I'll use some repels because I'm not too interested in fighting a bunch of Raticate. Even though it does bring me back to my old Pokemon Blue days. Let's use Hammer Arm. That'll be super effective. And down she goes. Alright, hopefully I have a lot of repels left. I've been playing four Pokemon games at once, so I can never remember what what I have in which game. Although I guess two of them don't really have repels. But anyway. Um, this is medicine. Here we go. 32. That should be enough. So I wonder if we have to do it in the same order every time. Like if it's sort of a puzzle. I still can't get to that item ball down there. But maybe later. So we came up here. And then we could go inside here, but there was just that guy in here, right? Yeah. So this seems to be a dead end, although maybe by going into this room, it triggers another door to be unlocked. There's this door. Oh, but we can't get to it now. Oh, interesting. Oh, it is... It is different. Okay, this area up here... Ooh! Who is that? An everlasting dark dream. An endless dream of darkness. Dad, Mom, Abra, where are you? Oh, is that a ghost? Very interesting. Alright, so we can sneak around here. We could go back down again. Let's do that and see if that item ball might be available, and then we'll try that door, assuming the furniture doesn't move to block us again. Oh. Well, now we can't get past. Although I did see that door shakes. So maybe that's a clue. Oh. Very maze-like. A dust stone. Okay, that's cool, but not really what I was looking for. Um, I could go out the other way, but I want to see what's in the door on the left, which hopefully hasn't been blocked off now. Okay, good. Then I'll come back and try the other way. A full heal. Not that great. There seems to be a strange breeze in here. Which is weird for being inside of a house. Large bedrooms, wow. Alright. It does seem like you do certain things, like going out a certain door or something, to trigger the furniture to change. Like, it doesn't change every time you go in and out of a door. So I think by going up these stairs, it's probably going to change again. Yeah, because now that door is blocked. That's kind of cool. Oh. Is that the same person? In the dark dream, I heard my dad's voice. Forget about the lunar wing. Please stay here with me. The lunar wing. Is that for Cresselia? But I think Cresselia is event only. That must be it. All right. Oh, the Lunar Wing. I can't take it now, but it'll be okay. Please return the wing to the Pokemon. I was waiting on the bridge so I could return it myself. Okay, I might have to look that up and see what that's about. Because I feel like maybe you take it to one of the bridges and meet Cresselia, but I... Cresselia is a mythical Pokemon, I, I think. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you can get it in-game, but if I... If it is, I don't think I ever got it when I played this years ago. Alright, well it seems like we've done all there is to do here in the strange house. Let's get back to the normal world, shall we? And it's springtime! Oh, I never showed you guys, I noticed it off screen, but um... Asper obviously changed uh, in the wintertime. Since he has a different appearance depending on the season. So there's, there's his spring appearance. We'll use him in a bit. Gonna keep using Basa until we get to level 41, but 
Definitely have to show off uh, all his different forms. All right, till we face to you, I think we have. And a full heal. A lot of full heals around here. There we go. Reversal Mountain ahead. A Max Repel, that could come in handy. Saw a Pokemon there, maybe a Drill Burr or something, but didn't get him in time. It's Bianca. Hey, Uno. Um, you know what? There's something I want to investigate here in Reversal Mountain, but the wild Pokemon are really tough and I'm having trouble with them. Could you come with me, please? Sure. Oh, and she'll have my Pokemon. Oh, it's going to be a double, like a double thing. That's cool. Can we face this guy in double battle? I will read your mind and predict your every move. Uh, good luck with that. Oh, is this a... Like a rotation battle? Okay, so it's not fighting with Bianca, at least in this one. Interesting. Okay. Um, I think... Well, if they're all fighting types, do I have anything that's good against fighting types? Not, uh, really. Let's use Surf. Let's see if that hits all three of them, or probably just the one that's active. It's not like a triple battle, it's just a rotation battle. I don't think these guys have any... Oh, I don't know, does Alton have any flying attacks, maybe, like Aerial Ace? I don't think he does, but I can't really remember. Let's, okay, let's do Alton... No, not really. We'll do Dragon Claw. And it looks like Girder will take the attack. Dynamic Punch. Ooh, okay. That'll do a lot of damage. It's 100 base power, and it will leave me confused. So while Alden is confused, let's switch out to uh, Bassa, and we'll use Hammer Arm. And actually, if he brings in Scraggy, that'll be super effective. Because Scraggy is part Dark type. Ah, uh, but it missed. I was afraid of that. It does have a 10% chance of missing. All right. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. There we go. Down goes Scraggy. It does lower our speed, but I assume the speed boost, like the confusion, only affects one of your Pokemon, not like all three. So we could still bring in Flo to finish off this girder. And I assume it's based on the speed of the Pokemon that you actually are using to attack. And we'll use Surf. That's probably our best move here. There we go. Good job, team. It was a, a fun battle, a little bit different than the usual ones. And the best part is, Bianca will heal our Pokemon. Very kindly. Your moves, they are entirely unpredictable. Well, thank you. I'm going to actually not use repels for a bit, just because I want to see what wild Pokemon are in here that has scared Bianca so much. Let's face these two guys. This should be a double battle then. Hold on, are you looking for the Magma Stone? Mm, not really. Ooh, Mountain! He seems excited. That's, that's good. It's good to be excited about things in life. Including mountains. Golbat and another Girder. Okay. Let's see what Bianca has. Musharna. That could be good. Psychic is good against both fighting and poison types. Um, I'm going to use Rock Slide, because it's super effective against Golbat, and it might cause him to flinch. So Rock Slide is actually pretty good in double battles. Because even though the damage divided, the uh, the flinch chance is not. They each still have the full 30% chance to flinch. At least I think they do. I've never really verified that, but I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Good job, Musharna. See, she says her Pokemon aren't that strong, but I mean... Maybe if she was doing double battles on her own, they wouldn't be? But she seems to have at least her Pokemon around level 40. Um, once again, I'm going to use Rock Slide, because as long as it hits, it'll be super effective against both Pokemon. And for Crustle, who will probably survive it, I have that flinch chance again. It is interesting, though, that the trainer's Pokemon are starting to get pretty high level at this point in the game. 
so I may have to, uh, at some point, do some off-screen training when we get to the next gym, perhaps. But I think we have a little bit of time in the next gym, right? So we've done, what, six gyms now? Uh, all right. Uh, flying type, so rock slide it is. Oh, that's not good. That'll be super effective, and down goes Bossa. But once again, luckily, we get fully healed. And now Swan has to take a Psychic Attack. Not quite a knockout, but close. Let's bring in Ulton to finish things off. And we'll just use a... Let's just use a Shadow Claw. Well, never mind. We'll use Dragon Claw. I was going to say we were going to save Power Points, but she heals us after every battle, so it doesn't really matter. Swan is pretty fast. Oh, and we flinched. But luckily Musharna was not attacked, and therefore did not flinch. And down goes Swana. Don't think I've trained a Swana before. They're a pretty good Pokemon, so maybe one day. There are a lot of cool Gen 5 Pokemon. In so little time. Right, there's a cave entrance there. But I don't want to leave quite yet, because I bet there's still a lot of trainers around. Scrupi and a Woobat. This could be a good place to get some experience, too. Because free heals and double battles go faster, so you get more XP, I think. Um, I'm going to use... Let's use Rock Slide again. Because Scruppy is a bug and poison type. So I imagine Musharna would have no trouble finishing it off. Whereas Wubat being Psychic would resist Psychic. Although, it's still so weak it might not matter. Shadow Ball. I wonder if she was targeting Wubat, probably. And then it got redirected when Wubat fainted. That wasn't too much XP, though, so we'll do like one or two more wild battles, and then I'll use another repel. Oop, who are you? Battle in a volcano. Oh, so maybe that cave up there wasn't the exit? Or maybe maybe it was, but you have to kind of go down here and do this part first. Only a single battle. Yeah, level 42, we're definitely getting a little bit underleveled. Okay, also, fun fact that I meant to say a long time ago, but kind of forgot about. So apparently there is a bug in this game that I didn't know about until like uh, around the time I started this Let's Play. Um, where when they programmed the game for these Pokemon to have increased levels as part of the challenge mode mechanic, they didn't change the stats. There's like an error in the code, so the Pokemon's stats don't in get increased, just their level is like increased. So if in the base game, Bennett would be level 40, um, even being level 42, it has the exact same stats. So some have argued that actually makes, and it's, it's the same too if you do easy mode, the level is lower, but the stats don't change. So some people have argued, and I'll let you guys be the judge of this, that in some ways challenge mode could be easier and easy mode could be harder because uh, in, they have the same stats no matter which mode you're on. But in challenge mode, they're a higher level and therefore you're getting more XP as you go along. Um, whereas easy mode, you'd be getting less XP, so... Oh, I'm probably slower now. That could be bad. No, we're not. Okay, good. Um, so, because you're getting XP slower in easy mode, it could be harder than challenge mode where you're getting XP faster, all is being equal. Uh, while it's unfortunate that bug exists, I don't really agree with it, because there's still a few things that I think make... Um, make challenge mode more difficult. Let's switch out to Nim, give him some screen time. Oh, and there's a doctor. What's this? Oh, okay, let's look around a little. And there's a doctor here, which I don't think I really need, but we'll face him anyway, since Bianca is my uh, doctor for the day. Um, so the reasons I don't think the challenge mode is actually easier than easy mode or even normal mode are because, one, the AI is a lot stronger, I believe, and AI is kind of the most important thing in Pokemon, in my opinion. Um, let's use Shadow Claw. Mm, yeah. Um, like, even if you have a weaker team but a better AI, it's probably better than having a stronger team and just using random moves or whatever they do in easy mode. So, uh, especially when you face like the gym leaders or the elite four, uh, a good AI there could be, um, could really make the difference. Plus, I think 
So the second reason, if this is true, they have better move set. I mean, they clearly have better move sets. So that's also a huge bonus um, to the strength of the opposing teams. Uh, thirdly, the higher levels do still have a role to play. When damage is calculated, it not only takes your stats into effect, it takes your level difference into effect. So it's uh, even though their stats aren't boosted, they are getting they are doing more damage from being a higher level. So there's still that bonus. And fourthly, a lot of the trainers have an additional Pokemon, which obviously makes them harder as well. Although it does give more XP, you could argue the same. Um, and sort of as a another part of that point, or a fifth point, you could even say, to me, the XP gain rate has never really... That, to me, is a little bit different than the difficulty of a game. It's more the convenience of the game it affects, because you could always just level... You could always just grind more. So what makes the game more challenging to me is... Um, like the AI and the movesets, like the, the strength of the teams you're facing. Because then you can always choose how much you grind or don't grind. But if you're uh, if you're really worried about um, about not getting a good XP rate in easy mode, you could just do more off-screen or more uh, wild Pokemon battles in easy mode. Oh, Spoink. I love Spoink. I am actually training a Spoink in Pokemon Scarlet right now. Well, I say right now. I haven't played in months. But because I paused the game without finishing it like halfway through. I'm considering that part of the games I'm currently playing. There we go. But yeah, that's why I think challenge mode is still harder than easy mode, and I think the normal mode is still in between. Um, but it is unfortunate that that bug exists, that it's, it's a little bit less difficult than they probably intended it to be. So I think, as I do in all my Pokemon games, we'll kind of make this a little bit uh, more challenging by not overleveling our Pokemon. Because if you, you know, if I could get them all to level 50 before the next gym, it would be a piece of cake. But, oh, is this another, was this a triple battle? That's cool, they're all different types of battles. Um, yeah, so you kind of, in a way, get to choose your own difficulty, as long as the mandated battles aren't so much that you could overlevel, which happens in a lot of games, unfortunately. All right, let's use Dragon Claw. And Surf would affect... Well, I'll resist Surf, so I'm going to go ahead and use it, because I want to make sure Gritter faints, and I'm not sure Dragon Claw will be enough to make it faint. But Dragon Claw plus a Surf probably will be. Yeah, the one thing I don't like about difficulty is when they have like the newer games where there's an experience share, and you can't turn it off. It's really annoying, because like, like I'm playing Legends Arceus right now, which is a super fun game. I, I'm really enjoying it. But my starter is level 50, and I catch a Pokemon that's like level 30, and I have to train them up to catch up, and it's like they almost never catch up, because... My starter is also getting, it's half as much XP, but it's still getting XP, so it's like, it's just really, like, I almost have to put him in the PC if I want to actually catch up, which just seems silly not to have my starter with me, so I really wish they had an option to turn the XP share off. It just seems like such an easy thing to program. It would take, like, some intern one afternoon, and it would just be a really nice option to have in the game. And it was the same for Brilliant Diamond as well. I literally had to start a second team, because if I just did, even the normal game is my main team, they would get so overleveled it wouldn't be fun. It wouldn't be a challenge at all. And as you guys who watch my Brilliant Diamond Let's Play know, even with the second team, because Pokemon have different experience gain rates, uh, my Mistress was gaining experience so fast I never used her. She literally just gained um, experience from the experience all so quickly that I uh, she was never up in the rotation. She was never the lowest level. So I only got to use her on a few occasions when I like forced myself to for fun. Or Miss Magius when she evolved. Or he evolved, I can't remember what it was. But Oh, Energy Ball. So this Misharn has a pretty good moveset. Psychic, Shadow Ball, or was it Extra Sensory? But either way, a Psychic Attack, Shadow Ball, Energy Ball. I'm not sure what the fourth attack is, but that's a that's a pretty decent moveset. Okay, let's use a Repel after this, even though this is a good place to get some XP. I can always do that off-screen so that you guys aren't, uh, aren't bored by it. Back to our handy dandy repels. Oh, dead end. Oh, I found a star piece. Yeah, whenever you see like a rock like that at a dead end, definitely click on it because it probably has something in there. This one maybe, but much less likely. Up, oh, dead end. A revive, okay. Can I bicycle in here? Probably not, because yeah, Bianca's with me. It is not a tandem bicycle. Not a bicycle built for two. 
And rock polish. Um, I don't think any of our Pokemon want that move. It's a cool move. It basically uh, it increases your speed by two stages, so it basically doubles your speed. So it can be really good for slow Pokemon like Rhyperior, for example. Uh, look, I trained a Rhyperior in my... Oh, Rusk learned it, but he's already pretty fast, so I'm not worth teaching it. Um, I trained a Rhyperior in my Boss Battle Only series for Pokemon Black, which was really fun. So um, it was really useful because he could use that on his first turn, and then suddenly you have a Pokemon with a huge attack stat and a decent speed stat. What is this place? I feel very strange. Could this be the place where Reversal Mountain started from? The lair of the Pokemon Heatran? Heatran is a Pokemon with magma-like blood flowing through it. It's cool they use legendary Pokemon from previous generations as a plot point in this one. But he doesn't seem to be here today, so... Not really sure what I'm supposed to be doing. What does the doctor say? Does he just heal me? Yeah. Life Force to the max. Alright. Will do, doctor. Always take the doctor's advice. So I guess we kind of... Have we explored everything in... No, I guess not. That's probably what we have to see to advance the plot, is that room there. Although I don't know how we get Heatran in there. Maybe he appears after the Pokemon League? He came in this way, right? Oh, we faced... Yeah, we faced him. Did we go up here? No, we did not go up here. It's like a maze. I should do that thing where you like always go right in a maze so that you make sure you don't miss anything. Well, I guess you can still miss something, but you are less likely to. And you're guaranteed to find the exit. And... Okay, I didn't, didn't face these guys yet, so this will be fun. See, now I kind of wonder if that other cave is not the exit. Maybe it's just like a little like ledge you go out to on the mountain and you find a cool item or something. But I don't want Bianca to be like... Well, I don't know. I, I would say I don't want her to leave me because then I don't get those free heals. Um, but we could probably still do these double battles and I would just have to go to the doctor or use some potions. And we might get more XP that way. I'm not sure if XP in these battles is shared with your partner. Probably not. But anyway. Um, after this battle too, we'll switch up from... Uh, from Nim. And maybe bring out the real Russ for a change. It is funny how this always freaks me out too, because I'm always like, I have Russ out, but I have a totally different move set. And Rock Slide would be super effective, but we are not the real Russ. It's kind of cool that I get to actually see Nim on screen a bit, because it's it's so rare, Tony. He's a very cool looking Pokemon. I'm gonna use Foul Play because Darmanitan has a very high attack stat, so this could do a lot of damage from the high base power and the stab bonus. There we go, and Flare Blitz, ooh. All right, luckily attack Musharna and not me, because the recoil damage will knock it out. And let's see what Boulder wants to do. I wouldn't actually mind too much if Musharna faints, just because it'd be cool to see what other Pokemon she has. But let's see what uh, the next Pokemon is, if there is another Pokemon. Excadrill. These guys are very strong. They're almost like uh, Ace Trainers. This is like the um, like Pokemon League or something. Okay, Gen 5. Oh, and Gen 5, yeah, it uh, resists Ghosts and Dark still. But Excadrill has a high defense stat. I'm sorry, high attack stat. So it still does a little bit of damage. And Horn Drill. Not a strong move, but it is enough to defeat Musharna. Sorry, Musharna. But at least I got my wish to see what other Pokemon Bianca has. Me and Fu. Not me and Xiao. Me and Xiao's pretty strong. I trained one of those in the um, Pokemon um, White 2 boss battle series I did. I probably mentioned that before. I'm going to do extra sensory because we have a chance to flinch it. 20%. And uh, we also have the Twisted Spoon, so that boosts the damage a little bit. But we did not get the flinch chance, so poor Mianfu has to take a slash attack. Ooh, Drain Punch. Good, good choice there. That'll be super effective. And she'll get a little bit of health back. Again, not that it matters, because Bianca must have like a backpack full of potions and revives, since I'm sure she heals up her Pokemon as well between battles. But onward we go. Once I grab this item. Oh, a PP up. That's really good. I love PP ups. Because, uh. Oh, a wild Pokemon. Who is this? I'm going to guess a Drillbur. 
Oh, two Excadrill. That's fun. And level 32. Not super high level, but at least more interesting than like a single Drillbur would have been. Oh, I didn't switch my Elite Pokemon. Uh, yeah, the downside is these guys are not... What, what does Fake Tears do? Lowers their attack, right? Probably not worth it. And, ooh, I guess being a Steel-type... Steel-type is just so good in Gen like 2 through 5. It resists so many different types. Um, that makes it hard, because like I think all of our moves for both these two Pokemon are resisted by Excadrill. And a flinch. Like I said, Rock Slide is good. Maybe I should just switch Pokemon at this point. Probably should. Oh, critical hit. I'll take that, though. Although I might have a Force Switch here in a second. We're facing different targets, which is not ideal. Oh, crit. Nice crit, though. Those crits are helping us. Alright, I'm going to knock out this one because I think... She should be able to knock out the one with like 2 HP no matter what. Yeah, down they go. Oh, but he's faster! Oh no! Maybe I should attack the uh, the higher level faster one. Wow, Fain in one and flinch the other. Alright, let's bring out the real Rust and see he's only level 40. Get some XP. And we are definitely faster, which is nice. Uh, let's use Crunch. It's not very effective, but it is fully accurate. And uh, will be more than enough damage to take out Excadrill. Okay. While I'm thinking about it, we are going to switch out. Bring Rust to the front of the pack. And onward we go. Hopefully there's some more fun double battles. Ooh, Ace Trainers. This should be a good one. You see those pointy stones? Are you aware of them? I am. They're stalagmites, right? Oh, they're all getting stronger to challenge the gyms, yep. It's cool, it's like a little victory road, but it's earlier in the game, and it's uh, double trainers. And you still get another victory road, so I really like this mountain. This is fun. It's really cool, too, how they can use Pokemon from all the generations. I love that they did like a remake of these games, or a sequel to these games. Because it was, it was a really cool gimmick to do Gen 5 games with only brand new Pokemon, but then if they had just done those, they would have missed out on the opportunity to like have all these cool Pokemon. All right, so what do we have here? A Ground and Dragon and a Psychic type. Um, I'm going to use Rock Slide, even though it's not very effective against Vibrava, because of that flinch chance again, and it'll do decent damage to uh, Grumpig. So, yeah, there's the flinch. So, that was a good choice. That's what I was hoping for. Power Gem. Yeah, so in Scarlet, I'm actually doing two teams, because it has that problem about being very easily overleveled. So, I have my main team I was using, and then I'm also kind of playing with friends. And doing, I'm kind of doing the east side of the map of Paldea on my own. Um, that's why I kind of stopped. I kind of got to the point where I'm heading to the north side. And I want to, I want to wait a bit. Um, and then I was doing the west side and the gyms and all there with my friends who were further behind and lower leveled. So in order to not be like super overpowered, I made a second team with some cool Pokemon that I've always wanted to train but haven't had a chance to. Uh, Grumpig being among them, or it's still a Spoink at this point. Um, I also have like a Talonflame on there or. Uh, I can't remember Talonflame's first stage Pokemon, but... Um, and some other new ones, too, that just didn't have room for my main team, like Palmet and um, uh, the guy that evolves into a boss diff. So it's a fun team, but unfortunately my friends and I have just been really busy and haven't gotten a chance to play together. So, okay, let's do... Um, I'm going to do Dig. It's super effective against Camerupt. And Camerupt is a pretty sturdy Pokemon, although it does have a lot of weaknesses. Well, I guess not a lot of weaknesses. It has um, a big weakness to water and a weakness to ground. Being ground and fired is four times super effective. Shadow Ball, good choice. So, yeah, not, not even uh, half its health there. Grumpig, kind of like Musharna, is a fairly bulky psychic type. It's a cool Pokemon because it's Grumpig's stats aren't like super high, but they're kind of well-rounded. So it's like actually a decent Pokemon to use. Uh, and it has a really good move pool, which is what I like. You can learn all kinds of fun attacks like Power Gem and Energy Ball and Shadow Ball and Psychic and uh, Mystic Fire, I think, even. Not sure about that one, but Dazzling Gleam, I think I can learn. So I'm, I'm excited to train one. But yeah, I'm kind of at a stopping point because until I can get um, 
Oh, I had Crunch. I probably should use Crunch. That would have been a good move against Grumpig. Um, until I can find time with my friends to play again, I can't really progress on the west side of the map with my secondary team. And I'm kind of at the point where all that I have left is like the north part of the map, and then I guess like the end game. So um, I don't really want to do the north part until I've defeated the gyms on the west part. But that's okay, because I have Legends Arceus to play my free time. I have this game I'm playing for the for Let's Play. I have um, Omega Ruby I'm doing for the boss battle series. So there's plenty of Pokemon in my life right now. But I will get back to Scarlet at some point. And I do plan to do a uh, Violet full Let's Play. Um, probably years down the road, in all honesty, because there's a lot of other games I want to play before that. But I will definitely do one at some point, And by then, it'll be fresh in my mind. Or who knows? Maybe they'll do a, a third game in that generation that'll be the one I do the Let's Play of. Pokemon Indigo or something. But um, but I think nowadays they seem to just do DLC instead of a new game, which which makes sense. It's, and it's kind of cool to be able to use your team um, for additional content, so I'm not against that. But the good news is by the time I do, by the time I finish, oh, what's he saying? Fills out the habitat list. Um, no, I don't. Maybe I get a reward for doing that, but I'm not really that kind of a player. Let's go right first, actually. Because this test made me think maybe that's the way out. Or that could be the way out. Sometimes you find cool items in those things, so... Like, I could really use, um... Like, those rock gems, whatever they're called, for... Not rock, flying gems. Um, for Russ here. For when I learn acrobatics. But instead, we have to Excadrill. Luckily, we now know a move that's super effective against them, even though it's a two-turn attack. See, so yeah, by the time I do play Pokemon Violet, and even by the time I finish Pokemon Scarlet, there should be more DLC out, so that's cool that I get to experience that. Um, hopefully with both teams. And I do already have a team planned out for Violet. There were When I planned out my team for Scarlet and my secondary team, I also planned out a team for Violet, which I think is going to be really fun. There are a lot of cool Pokemon to play in those games. And then also, also, as sort of just like a time killer, I trained like a tertiary team, which I don't really use for anything except for fun. Um, I kind of just did it as something fun to do because I wanted to train some really cool Pokemon like uh, Dragonite and... Um, uh, oh my god, Sazendora. What's its? Hydreigon. I remember its, its real name. It's, or its English name, I guess I should say, not its real name. Um, and Garchomp and Tyranitar... I think I did Arcanine and Gyarados as the other two. Just like a team of like six. A lot of them are dragon types, so there's no type diversity really. But just six really cool Pokemon that I thought would be really fun to, to train up in the overworld. Um, and get to see them in in glorious 3D in Pokemon Scarlet. So I just use them to taste wild Pokemon. They're all like super over level now, but it was fun training them up. But now they're level 60 and I'm still like early on in the game. It, it kind of it got to the point I wanted to get to, as I will say. This is a big area. Yeah, what, okay, we've been playing for about half an hour, so we'll go just a little bit further. We'll see what's down in this area, okay. Water gem, I'll take that. It's not as good as a flying gem, but we might use it at some point. But if we're not done this cave in the next few minutes, I might go ahead and continue it in the, uh, in the next episode then. I was telling myself I was only going to do one today, but I'm having so much fun, I might squeeze in one more. I am off work today, so I have some time. I do want to get some house stuff done. I have a lot of stuff I still need to do. It's been more than a year since I moved in at this point, and there's still stuff I need to do. I just ordered my dining dining table, um, which is nice, but I've, I have a temporary one that's been working just fine, but I feel like it's... I just kind of want to get it done, so I ordered the final one. I have most of the upstairs decorated, mostly. There's still, like, a, an autumn I need to put together. Um... And a few like little things I need to do. My uh, my granddad was an artist, so he passed away when I was like six years old. So I really didn't. I have a few vague memories of him, but it was a long time ago. Um, but I found one of his old sketchbooks when we cleaned out my grandma's house, and um, some of his sketches, his like painting, not sketches, I guess they're, they're draft paintings, are really good. Like they're basically as good as real his real paintings were. Um, and it's funny because one of the drafts, the final painting, is actually at my uh, my parents' house. Oh, Toxic Orb. That could be good for certain Pokemon, but not one that we have. Um, so what I decided to do is in my stairwell, I have like this big blank wall because it's like a U-shaped stair. And uh, I'm going to put up, I'm going to frame and put up his uh, seven sketches that I have. 
And I think that should look really cool. So I need to order the frames for those and hang those up. And I got a lot to do downstairs still, but my goal is in the next two months to get all that done. And that way I can just spend the rest of my time playing video games after that point. But even until then, I'm gonna try to play some, some Pokemon, some Star Wars. Oh, all right. Say bye for now. So I feel like we can come back here maybe and check out that place we missed, but I don't know if we will. Oh, I guess that I guess bye for now means bye until the next time we see her. So, all right. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the Strange House and Reversal Mountain. That is all for today. Well, not for today, but all for this episode, I should say. So I will uh, be right back with the next episode. But thank you all for watching. Keep being awesome. And I'll see you again soon.